do we have enough battery for a few more minutes for the end finale, or are we... Uh... Yeah, yeah, let's give, let's give it a quick try. Okay, a quick try. If you disappear, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, the battery on the phone is about to go. So I will do the uh, rapid fire. It's going to be rapid fire, rapid fire version of things. It's called the firing line. Basically, I throw some names at you. You tell me if you like it. Well, you're probably going to like them all. Maybe a funny story to go with it, and uh, we'll carry on as long as we can for the next few minutes. If if you disappear, you disappear. First name, Pez uh, Watley. Uh, uh, great teacher. Um, he, I, I got the pleasure of working with him early on uh, in my Break once I got my break in the career in, in my career, um, and Pez Watley is who taught Shane Douglas how to throw a punch. Mm. Sid, Sid Vicious, <laughs> great softball player. Uh, <laughs> I, I I like Sid. Sid you know, Sid's a, you know, first of all, he's a specimen, right? He's a gigantic guy, um, and, and really, you know, uh, uh, just a down to earth guy. You know, when you start talking, nothing like you'd expect, uh, but. For the life of me, I can't figure out. Like, and this has been going on for the entire like since I've known him. Like when we were in Continental, like he just wouldn't show up one night because it was a softball game, uh, WCW yeah, softball tournament. You know, you're like, oh, okay. is there a clause in his contract that says he can play softball <laughs> before wrestling? But, uh, but yeah, but it's just a huge specimen. Jack Victory, best punch in wrestling. Good, good guy. Uh, Jack's one of those guys. Like you, know, he's always got a smile on his face, right? He's always cutting up in the dressing room. Uh, not that I traveled a ton with him on the road, but when you did travel with him, uh, you know, it was always enjoyable. And uh, he was one of those guys uh, in the same vein as, say, like a Bobby Eaton. Like when you were in the ring with him, you didn't have to worry about anything. Like you know, it was going to be a good match. Next one is Medusa. Ah, uh, wow, uh, Deucey's. Uh, you know, she's. She and Sherry really are the, the trailblazers for all the divas in the business today, right? Uh, you know, I, there were women before, right? I have nothing to get, uh, not detracting anything from Mae Young or, or uh, you know, any of the others before. But uh, uh, th- 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 by the time the douche and Sherry were, were pushing up that ladder, you know, pushing through that glass ceiling, I guess we'll say, uh, the wrestling business really was a good old boys uh, industry. Um, Again, not that it was off-putting the woman or whatever, but it just wasn't a woman's place, like a woman's world, right? And they came in, and I'm sure that they faced an awful lot of uh, uh, negative comments from fans and things like that and somehow persevered through it. But Dushi and Sherry are two, like, uh, I put along with them Jazz. Jazz, Medusa, and Sherry Martell. When I watch those three wrestle, I don't get the impression or feeling that I'm watching women's wrestling. It's like it's like three badasses doing men's style wrestling. You know, like for instance, like the, the body slam, they have a woman throw it almost sort of like gut wrench it. They do it like a guy would do it, right? Um, and all three really knew their way around the ring. Total pros, all of them. And uh, uh, glad that I got to know all of them and, and get a chance to be in dressing rooms with all of them. Yeah. Uh, one I've never asked before, Mark Marrow. Oh, man, Mark. Uh, to me, like Mark, it's funny because we were just talking. His name just came up last night. Uh, you know, you see him playing the little Richard character, right? And uh, uh, it's easy to like uh, allow yourself to believe. Like, and fans often do. Like, people think I'm the franchise, and people think Richard Flair is Flair, and uh, you know, people think of him like that little Richard character. Uh, he was a Golden Gloves boxer, you know, tough kid, great athlete, uh, and was one of those guys that, that I, I think long before wrestling really went to that, like that uh, Uber entertainment side that he was, you know, like one of the front faces that were doing that, you know, like carrying on this character, nothing like that in real life. Uh, but in front of that camera, boy, he would turn that smile on and, and go, uh, you know, and, and when he, you know, does the jabs and stuff in the ring, you can see, I, I've watched old tapes of it, like from the golden gloves tournaments and things, you know, hell of a boxer. And you can see that coming out in the, you know, in this character uh, on screen, it's 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 fascinating to watch. Uh, another one I don't think I've ever asked before, Rikishi. Uh, Rikishi, the guy. God, again, I'm old enough to have been around from you know the get go of his career, right? So uh, all those guys, uh, uh, Kokina, uh, later um, Yoko, uh, Yoko. When he was uh, you know 350, 60, 70 pounds, when we were in Continental, he was honest to God moving around. Uh, Yoko Kokina then uh, like a flyweight. I mean, like you know, like Ray would move around. Ray Ray, 
uh, all those guys. I always talk about the, you know, the, the Samoan family. It's, it's something about wrestling that's in their DNA, right? Like they're all great at it. They all just take to it like a fish to water. Um, and, you know, like with, with watching uh, uh, Rikishi, you know, he's, you know, you can see his character come full circle when he was younger and was doing a lot of that flying stuff. Uh, and then becomes this character and, and you know, digresses to just the things that he does for the Rikishi character. But all those guys in the family, him included, they can go in the ring. I mean, they can do the arm bars and the chaining and the flying and everything. There's really nothing those that family can't do. Sonny. The first Eva, right? Uh, the thing about Sonny is she and I had, a, had a, uh, a connection because she was also wanting to be a doctor. And so we had other things to talk about in the dressing room than just wrestling. Uh, uh, Sonny's one of those uh, women that, one of those people that can hold a conversation on politics, on wrestling, on medicine, on you know, a, a lot of things. Uh, very, very intelligent girl. And boy, when, uh, she's still a beautiful girl, but when she was younger, uh, you know, women in wrestling didn't look like that, right? I mean, it was just like, whew, wow, like this is something different. Uh, I, I'm heartbroken at the stuff I'm hearing lately, you know, with her because she really does have so much more to offer. And I, I don't want to see anybody, especially my friends, in a place where they feel there's no other course forward other than to digress to this stuff uh she's got so much more to offer and i i hope she can get herself cleaned up and straightened up and and go out and find what it is in the world she should be doing because she's got a hell of a skill set yeah a couple more and then i will wrap it up major guns major guns uh this was when i think wcw started trying to mimic wwe and in, in my head anyway, I don't know how the fans see it, but in my head, WCW and the NWA, they were the wrestling company and WWE was the sports entertainment company. And that was the distinct flavor. One was vanilla, one was chocolate. Whoop. That'll be the 10% then, I believe. The 10% battery left. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. I'll get rid of this. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> definitely dying. So, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I just think that she was put in, in a position, A, where they – you know, it's like trying to do sports entertainment without Vince McMahon's mind and his and his cadre. Uh, you're you're gonna again probably get it partially right, partially wrong. And and to me, WCW was trying to straddle, still being the wrestling company while they were still trying to become the sports entertainment company. And because of that, we're doing neither well. With uh, let's see, the next few Dawn Marie. Uh, Dawn, uh, she. Uh, as I remember her in ECW, like a, a, an eager go-getter, right? Like she was, all the women in ECW were, I, I don't recall ever hearing any of them say no. Uh, you know, they were all to the point, like where I would even tell a friend, like, don't just say yes. If you don't feel comfortable with it, let them know. You know, I, I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Um, but uh, Dawn came in and uh, I think when they put her with like the impact players, like you could see her start to blossom out a little bit. Like, she, like for me with the franchise, it finally gave me something to sink my teeth into. Uh, and, and with, with them, and especially like with Lance, right? Lance is an amazing in ring performer. Uh, but like Brad Armstrong on, on camera, he's not, he's not very evocative. You know, it's a, he's not very uh, uh, photo telegenic, I guess. And, but in the ring, my God. So you put somebody like, uh, like Don Marie with them and, and she was sort of like the yin to their yang, you know, and, and really came out of her shell at that time. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I've heard all these other stories. That I, I take all the stories in wrestling with a grain of salt because you know, it's like telephone line in, in wrestling sometimes. Okay. But, Tele- uh, telephone, tell a friend, tell a wrestler. That's the saying yeah, I hear yeah, Absolutely. Yes, no truer words. I, I've heard that she's a nurse now. Is that correct? I don't know. You know, I yeah. genuinely don't know. I, I've heard that. I hope it's true for her case because, again, bright girl. And, uh, you know, this business, you know, it, it has a lot of attractiveness to it and a you know, lore of big money and travel and all of that. And it also can be closed today and, you know, dry as a desert. So, uh, I, you know, I, I hope that that's true with her. 